Jonathan Jake, your average Nebraskan farm boy, has been working in the field his whole life. He's also played football since he was a little boy, and now he's a senior at Adams Central High School. Being 6'3 and 230 pounds, Jonathan's a monster when he gets going, but will that be enough to draw any college interest? That's what we're about to find out, because I only have one more chance to prove myself, and I have a major issue that you might have already noticed. I tore my meniscus earlier in the summer, which is almost fully recovered, but if I can't earn a scholarship to play college football, I'll have to give up on my dream and go with my backup option option the military. My only goal is to make it into college, but I have to play as a pocket passer due to my injury, and I'm still adapting to standing tall in the pocket and getting the ball out. I don't want to crap on my offensive line or anything, but they weren't giving me enough time, and our first game against Omaha Westside High was not going well for us. By the third quarter, we still hadn't scored a single point, but then I floated up a ball to my best friend, Gio Saria, and he took it all the way inside the five, but then my coach went on to call three straight running plays, so I had to watch as we settled for three. We ended up getting another field goal after that, but I still hadn't thrown for a touchdown, and all credit has to go to my team's defense who held Omaha Westside to no points themselves. Them being that good made me feel like we had a real chance at the Nebraska State Championship, but I have to put up better stats in order to get recruited because I want to play in college with my best friend. If I can't get any scholarship offers, I'll have to walk on somewhere, but just like the previous week, my receivers weren't creating enough separation, and unfortunately, my defense had already given up points to Kearney High. My head coach called a cover two beater next, so I pushed through my healing meniscus to roll out, but I couldn't get the ball out in time, I fumbled it away, and I was devastated. It seemed like my offensive line hated me because they let me get run through with no protection, so I had to get it out as quickly as possible to Gio Saria, and a few plays later, my best friend snuck behind the opposing defense, so I found him for my first touchdown this season. If there was anybody on the field I trusted, it was him, so I always made sure to look in his direction, and this play had to go in my college recruiting tape, but after that, I went back to struggling as a pocket passer, so to end the third quarter, it was a massive deal that I found my buddy Gio for another touchdown. It was so fun to watch my teammates play defense on Kearney High, and we were on a path to the state playoffs starting the year 2-0, as I had a very solid day with three passing touchdowns, but Gio Saria won player of the game, and we went out to dinner with the team afterwards to celebrate. I also heard the Air Force was interested in me, but if I played for a military school, I wanted it to be Army, and I was still a long way from earning any scholarships. This was almost one of the best starts I could have had the following week, as I threaded a needle on a 47-yard pass, but it was dropped, and after thing Nijin couldn't hold on to the ball, I stopped looking his way. That ended up being an amazing decision because guys like Craig Ostrander also got some looks, which turned out to be the biggest play of the game. He got caught, but he made it inside the five, and the fullback dive put us up by seven. That must have awoken the Norfolk Catholic defense because they started playing us tougher, but running back Alex Howell was up for the challenge as he did what Thang Nijin couldn't, and I did give the 6-4 wide receiver another chance as I saw he had a mismatch on a 5-10 corner, but he still managed to lose on that 50-50 jump ball ball, and going into halftime, it wasn't ideal, but we were tied at 7 with Norfolk Catholic. That's why it was so crucial that I opened up the third quarter by finding Gio Saria, who left the corner on him in the dust, but the Hornets were just not willing to go away, and I contributed to that. As soon as this ball left my hands, I instantly regretted it. I mean, I had to perform well if I was ever going to get any college offers, but I hadn't been too impressive, and my coach was calling halfback draws on 3rd and 12, which was not helping. With about 90 seconds left, I had the hope that we got one more chance and all I could do was watch as my defense did their best to hold them on third and four, but Norfolk Catholic just wanted it more. It hurt a lot to watch them celebrate, but what was worse was that I was still a one-star recruit. My biggest issue was that I was terrible at getting the ball out quick enough, so until I do that, I probably won't get any offers, but I did get very lucky in breaking this sack and putting the ball in the right spot to get us a first down. To be entirely fair to myself though, Pierce High School corners were doing a fantastic job in man coverage, and my receivers weren't doing me any favors. I love my tight end, but I don't understand how he forgot to hold onto the ball here, which resulted in our first turnover, and the longer I struggle, the less of a chance I'll have at getting a college scholarship, so I told Gio Saria that we had to start making some noise immediately, and on this drive, I looked his way on every single play to get us inside the red zone, but on 4th and 4, I crumbled under pressure, so we didn't put up any points. By the end of the first half, I finally figured it out though, and as I continued to tear it up by firing lasers up the seams, my confidence rose drastically. The Blue Jays had scored since our last touchdown, but I made sure we got another one, and it might have taken me half the season, but I was performing in a way that would get me noticed. This was the first time that I had thrown for four touchdowns in a game, and I didn't mind getting down on my knees because I had just jumped up to being a two-star recruit, which made my dad incredibly happy, and the Tigers were interested in seeing me play next week. With a scout in attendance from Missouri, I knew that if I wanted to impress him, I had to beat Gretna High School, and I felt like throwing for four touchdowns would do that, but my nerves were showing. I also had to make sure that I 
fed it to Gio Saria because I'd love to play with my best friend in college. So not only did I need to look amazing, but he needed to as well. And we went for it on fourth and two here, but Michael wasn't willing to fight for the first down. So due to that, it took me until the second quarter to put us in the lead. And I was getting into a bit of a rhythm, but then Gio Saria let me down when he couldn't hang on to the football. And I would have preferred if we just attempted a field goal, but my coach made me go for it. And Alex Howell came up a bit short, which meant that after Gretna High School ended the half scoring six, we were trailing again. It took me until the end of the third quarter to have an opportunity to change that, and it might have been really risky, but I said that if I was going to eat, Gio Saria would as well. I still have no idea how I hit this throwing window, but that made me feel unstoppable, and with that mentality, all of my nerves with the scout watching me just disappeared. That gave me the confidence to pick up a third and 18 to Gio Saria that I normally wouldn't, but coach made us run it and take our three after that, so I never had a chance to get my fourth passing touchdown. However, I felt like I did good enough in front of the scout, and I didn't get a scholarship offer from Missouri, but I did get some from these three schools where I accepted one from Wyoming. By the time the regular season ended, we were 5-2, and two, but I was still a two-star recruit. I started the Nebraska High School State playoffs against Kearney High, who is 6-1, and one, but their one loss this year came to us, and I'm playing 10 times better now than I was back when we beat them. Since this was their second time going against me, though, they were good at reading my tendencies, and I think that's why I threw an interception on our first drive. Obviously, that wasn't ideal because I'm trying to get a scholarship from schools other than Wyoming, and if I can, I'll have a tough choice to make, but I won't worry about that until the end of the year. I would still really like to play with Gio Saria in college, and the odds of that happening are probably very slim, but I'm going to continue to feed him the ball and hope that we get some offers to the same schools because we've been playing together since we were six. So far against Kearney High, we haven't really had any issues, and since our defense continues to hold it down, alongside me starting to dominate, I think we could actually win a state championship. Even though I was doing an amazing job of feeding Gio Saria though, he screwed it up by fumbling the ball on the two yard line. And after that moment, the starters were pulled from the game and we had a lot to celebrate with this result, especially since I threw for four touchdowns, but we still had to beat three other teams. And if we did that, I'd get a high school state ring. There was much bigger and exciting news though. And that's the fact that the Cornhuskers wanted me. Since I just received my biggest scholarship offer from Nebraska, I was pumped to play against Omaha West Side High, but I needed to control my excitement because I began the quarterfinal playoff game with an interception. And luckily my defense forced the safety from that play so it didn't hurt us much but I'm still hoping to pick up more college offers and don't ask me how Omaha Westside is 7-0 because we beat them in our first game. We won that one 6-2 so I will never forget it but we have gotten so much better since then and I kept building up Gio Saria's recruiting interest throughout the day. He still has no scholarship offers so I'm hoping he can get at least a couple but in order for that to happen I think he needs to be on a high school team that wins the Nebraska State Championship so we have to finish this game out but our offense has stopped scoring and that means with a couple minutes left Omaha Westside still has a chance but they'll need to pick up this fourth and ten and it was extremely close but Bob Owens was marked short. They've played us twice this year and scored seven total points on our defense so that's pretty embarrassing for them and in the end I tried to go for a couple big plays to pad stats but it didn't work out as even when I tried to help Gio Saria he dropped the simple catch. Somehow he still won player of the game though we were moving on to the semifinals and I got an offer from Deion Sanders so everything was going extremely well. If we win this game, I'll be playing in the Nebraska High School State Championship, and now that my torn meniscus was fully healed, I finally had a little bit more mobility. That allowed me to make a 50-yard throw on the run to open up the game, and with the way I'm playing, Blair Senior High is in a lot of trouble. Not only do I want to win, but I want to blow them out while putting up incredible numbers, and I don't know what they were thinking when they tried to blitz me here. It might have worked earlier in the year, but that film that they studied was not up to date anymore. That's okay with me, because I want to get all of my buddies some college offers, and things were going so well for us that I even included Thy Nijin, who struggled immensely through our first few games, but was now a consistent target that I could trust. I had already gotten up to a three-star recruit, but after this performance, I might be a four-star, and I had some massive decisions coming up like my college choice. Ideally, I'd like to play with Gio Saria, but he still has zero hard offers, and I wanted to get him more touchdowns, but coach made me hand it off instead. My team's defense did such a fantastic job of shutting down Blair's quarterback the entire game though, so I didn't even step onto the field in the fourth quarter as we cruised on to the Nebraska High School State Championship. I also put up an amazing stat line which in turn got me up to a four-star recruit and I was getting a ton of interest. Going into my final high school game ever, I still hadn't made a college decision, but I was more worried about winning the state championship game against Norfolk Catholic who beat us earlier on in the year. I was hoping that if Gio Saria played well enough, he would get his first college offer, so words cannot describe how pumped up I was when I connected with him for the first touchdown of the day.
day. Our kicker missed the extra point, but like I had done all season, I watched as my team's defense locked up, and on the final play of the first quarter, I decided to send it to Gio Saria, but I immediately regretted it once the ball left my hands. This was the same defense that crushed me mentally midway through the year, but I had gotten better and healthy, so despite staying in the pocket most of the season, I finally showed off some of my athleticism I got from the farm, shedding a tackle and fighting for a first down. I thought this was the drive that would separate us from our competition as we went up by two possessions, but for some reason, when I had a touchdown over the top of the defense a bit later, I underthrew it by about 10 to 15 yards into a pick, and with just four minutes remaining in the game, the score was still stuck at 13 to zero. Defense played a big role in this one, and fortunately, ours was just a bit better, so I won a high school state championship, and I was even player of the game as well, which got me ranked in the ESPN top 150. Every single school on my board offered me a third string role though, so I could go to any college, but I narrowed it down to these three. I was stuck between Nebraska, Missouri, and Wyoming, but only the Cowboys because they were Gio Saria's only scholarship offer, and let me know which of those three I should start my collegiate career at. I have to make my college decision, and after winning a high school state championship in Nebraska, Missouri's Elia Drinkwitz, Nebraska's Matt Rule, and Wyoming's Craig Bull all wanted me. My best friend Gio Saria had already committed to the Cowboys, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to attend college in Wyoming, and Missouri was intriguing because they play in the SEC, but Brady Cook will be the starter for the next two years. So then there's Nebraska, who seems to be like a dumpster fire in the Big Ten, and after taking a look at where Josh Allen is now, I decided playing for Wyoming wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Even as a four-star recruit, though, I began as the second-string quarterback for the Cowboys, and I'd have to fight in practice to get my shot on the field, which was going to be difficult in the rain. I was only a 69 overall, and a lot of my receivers were dropping the ball, so I didn't give off the best first impression to head coach Craig Bull, as I was a bit rattled. On this play, I wanted to find Gio Saria, but he slipped on his route, so I wasn't able to, and he was really struggling to stay on his feet, but at least Devin Bodie was a consistent receiver for me in the downpour, or at least I thought he was. Just like everybody else, including myself, the rain made this first practice miserable, and being successful in college was going to be a lot harder than I thought it would, even at Wyoming. Just when I was about to do something right, I messed it up, and I was a long way from being a starting quarterback. Our first game was against Nebraska, where I'd watch Andrew Peasley stink it up from the sidelines, and I was stuck holding the kicker's balls against the Cornhuskers. It wasn't the most exciting thing in the world, but at least I was getting involved, and surprisingly, we were in the game the entire time against Nebraska, but Andrew Peasley threw multiple interceptions, so at the next practice, I felt like I had a real chance to impress my coach and potentially earn the starting job. It started almost perfectly as well with my first passing touchdown ever in training, going 50 yards in the air to my best friend, and my confidence rose a lot after that play, so as Craig Bull allowed me to try out some new things, I felt like I continued to live up to his expectations. However, then he had me run a halfback screen where the running back I was supposed to throw to got obliterated, so his trust dropped almost all the way back to zero, and some of the offensive plays we ran after that looked like they came out of Iowa's playbook. It was really disappointing, but even though things started so well, they ended terribly, and after taking a sack on the final play of practice, I was right back to where I started, so in our next game, there was no way I was going to do more than just be the placeholder. With less than a minute remaining, I watched as Andrew Peasley got us in field goal range, so I had to hold on to it well on the potential go-ahead field goal, but our kicker doinked it off the upright, and he blamed me for the bad hold, which hurt my coach's trust even more. Luckily, I had a decent chance of playing this week against Eastern Washington because they're an FCS school, and Gio Sario was off to an amazing start. All we had to do for me to play was get a large lead on them, but we kept getting held to field goals instead, so going into the fourth, we were only up by 19, and by the time I got in, all I did was hand the ball off, even on third and 10 when we needed to throw for the first down. I still had zero quarterback stats this year, but my goal was to earn the starting job as soon as possible, so my two offensive linemen failing to block ticked me off, and I was hoping that somebody on my team could get open, but that didn't seem to happen either, so I decided that I was going to have to do it all by myself. I wasn't the biggest scrambler in high school, but at 6'3", I was shockingly able to pull off some crazy stuff, and that really impressed head coach Craig Bull until I ruined all of his trust on the following rep with this interception. If you thought that was going to ruin my practice though, you'd be mistaken. My mama always told me to never back down and never give up, so I completed my next five passes in a row and then went over the top of the defense to Gio Saria for six. It might not seem like much, but I was earning Craig Bull's trust back, and I was over a third of the way to being the starter, so I wasn't even mad playing my role against Air Force. The more we continued to lose, the easier it'd be to take Andrew Peasley's spot, and I upgraded my throwing stats after the game. To become the starter at Wyoming, though, I'd have to practice perfectly, and it would not be easy with the rain dumping this hard. Literally nothing was going my way, as even Gio Sario was dropping balls that he normally wouldn't, and I was going to go to my tight end on this one, but he slipped as I rolled out, so I had no choice but to do it myself on the ground. Despite the circumstances, though, I still managed 
managed to have a pretty solid practice, but with just a few reps remaining, I didn't sense the blitz very well, so I had only earned a little bit more of head coach Craig Bowles' trust in the rain, and I was almost halfway to competing for the starting job, but even at our indoor training, my wide receivers dropped it a lot, and my offensive line forgot to block again. I guess they were making it clear that they didn't want me to succeed, but I was coming for Andrew Peasley's job, and nothing was stopping me. I mean, it certainly wouldn't be easy when it seemed like I couldn't catch a single break, but at some point, everybody would figure out how to catch again, and until then, I'm just going to use my legs. I figured this would be my best opportunity to show my coach that I could do something with broken plays and turn them into successes, and I also promised to myself that before the end of the year, I would be the starter, because we weren't winning any games with Andrew Peasley out there, and my throwing skills just kept getting better. I started off our bye week practice with a perfectly executed play to my best friend, Gio Sario, which went for at least 20, and then I knew he was faster than cornerback Rook Brown, so I chucked it up to him on the next play, but he left me disappointed. Since Andrew Peasley was 1-4 and four as the starter, I needed much less coach trust than originally to earn a position battle versus him, but my offensive line must have been determined to keep me as the backup, so it was another week where nothing would change, but tight end Trayton Welch was becoming one of my favorite targets to throw to, and to be honest, I was hoping that we lost to New Mexico. They were 0-5, so a bad result would make Andrew Peasley look even worse, but unfortunately, he managed to clutch up in the end, and I honestly wish Dio Saria just dropped this ball instead. When I needed him to help me in practice, he seemed to forget how to catch, and I wasn't happy with Gio, but he did make up for his mistake when I tried to get him decapitated. With this completed pass over the middle, I had finally earned my coach's trust, so as long as I didn't screw it up on these final 11 reps, I'd have a chance to be the starter, and you best believe I played it very safe, taking only check down, so after being the placeholder for hopefully the final time, I would get my opportunity, even though we beat Colorado State by 10, and this season was still salvageable as well. I was in my first position battle at Wyoming, and I wasn't thrilled it was raining because every time the weather is bad, I struggle to perform, but at least tight end Trayton Welch wanted to see me succeed. He always manages to make a play when I target him, but sometimes I just don't have enough time to get the ball out, and since none of the three receivers on the left side of the field got open on this rep, I was in a lot of trouble because Andrew Peasley was beating me really bad, but I still had a little bit of hope remaining. I was beginning to get into a bit of a rhythm, but I just had to hope that it wasn't too late, and I kept going back to Wyatt Wyland since he was holding on to it. This ball was intended for Trayton Welch, but it slipped when I went to throw it, so I couldn't believe why it still got to it, and I needed to do something special on the final play of this competition to win it, so I somehow managed to escape the pocket and complete a miraculous pass on the run, but apparently that wasn't enough, and things got worse after that because we were beating San Jose State. We were 13 and a half point underdogs going into this one, but Andrew Peasley got us our third straight win, securing his starting position, so all I could do was upgrade my throwing stats even more, and it feels wrong to say this, but I was preying on our downfall against Fresno State. With 36 seconds left, we were down by two and just a little bit out of field goal range, but then Andrew Peasley wound down the clock, and on top of his terrible time management, he fumbled the final play away, which got picked up and taken back to the house to end the game. As it happened, I acted upset, but on the inside, I was thrilled because I was given another chance to become the starting quarterback, and I got off to a great start with a throw on the run to Devin Bodie. Since we were coming off of a loss, winning this one would be easier than the last, but I still had to do a lot to take Andrew Peasley's job, and with nine reps left, after struggling for a few plays, I found Devin Bodie again over the middle of the field, and I don't know when exactly it just clicked, but we were hooking up on everything. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for me and my other wide receivers, especially after Gio Saria screamed at me to throw it to him way too late, and I was beginning to realize that once again, I was going to fail the position battle, so with a couple of reps left, I thread the needle to my most consistent target for a big gain, and on the final play, I had no choice but to chuck it up to him in the end zone, but he didn't even try to come down with it, and I was just seen as a failure. There were only a few games left in the season, but with a road loss to Boise State, we were almost ineligible for a bowl, and after seeing how terrible Andrew Peasley's stats were, I was determined to finally take over for this team. I was in yet another position battle for the starting spot, but this time things were different because that first ball wasn't even supposed to go to Gio Saria, but I was finally getting lucky, and even when you'd think I'd made the wrong read, I couldn't seem to do anything wrong. Like I said, I was sick of being the backup, so no matter if somebody got open or not, I was going to make something happen with my 73 speed, and that's what I did on this breakaway touchdown. We were five plays into the battle now, and I still hadn't made a single mistake yet, so I was a little bummed out when I missed this throw on the following play, but I've remained confident, staying on pace to take the number one spot, and with about five reps remaining, I managed to put this one just by the linebacker to find Devin Bodie for a 30-yard gain. However, what followed that must have been the biggest choke job I ever had to experience. I got mixed up on my receiver's route, so I threw an interception straight to the defensive back, and then 
then on the final play of the position battle, I sailed yet another throw, so I was devastated, but my coach gave me one more chance before our game against Hawaii, and that's all I needed as I was fed up. I wanted to be the starter so bad because I had been working my butt off all season for it, but with a few reps remaining, my receivers went back to forgetting how to catch the ball, so I thought I was going to choke, but on the final play, I took my check down and I had finally earned the starting role. This was an amazing feeling, but I also knew it was just the beginning. My first start ever in college was against Hawaii in the snow, and I didn't do well on the opening drive, but I knew that I'd bounce back and get more comfortable soon. A lot of the game was just me handing the ball off to Jamari Farrell, and when I wasn't doing that, it was these halfback screens that went for quite a few yards, but I was just happy I wasn't out there as the placeholder. One of the more frustrating parts of my first start was the fact that my receivers still were struggling, but I can't even blame them because I wasn't performing the way that I needed to, and the weather was making things miserable as Gio Saria dropped what would have been a huge gain. Following that, my coach forced us to go for it on 4th and 8, but nothing got open, so it seemed like we were going to go into the half trailing, but then I pulled off my longest play ever, finding tight end Trayton Welch for a 49-yard gain. I thought that meant we'd score, but I got too relaxed, made the laziest check down throw, and I tried my hardest to make up for my mistake, but I couldn't even make the stopping tackle on the Hawaiian corner. Most players would get extremely discouraged after a turnover like that, but for myself, I loved it. Now I could sling the rock all over the field without a care in the world, because the worst that could happen is I become the backup again, and I've experienced that all year. With no pressure, since we were down by 21, I was able to throw for my first collegiate touchdown, and unfortunately, that was one of the only good moments of this game. Despite targeting Gio Saria all day, it took him dropping three balls before he finally caught this one, and I would pick up my second touchdown throw here, but it was too late to have a chance at a comeback, or at least I thought. We shockingly recovered the onside kick, and then just a few plays later, I snuck this ball right by the Rainbow Warrior safety to Wyatt Wyland, who would take it to the crib, so we actually still had a chance until this failed two-pointer. It was devastating to lose to Hawaii in my first start, but I felt like I had a solid performance, and coach agreed to keep me as QB1, so I focused on increasing my strength even more. The final game of my freshman season at Wyoming was against Utah State on the road, but just like in practice, my offensive line decided not to block for me, so I was injured just two plays into the game, and by the time I got back onto the field to start the second quarter, we were already down by 14. On an early fourth and short, I thought I had Devin Bodie, but I threw a wobbly ball off target, so it took me until there were two minutes left in the half to get us back in that position, and I just wasn't able to hook up with my receivers very well. No matter what type of play I tried to make, it seemed like none of them could consistently hold on to anything, but then Gio Saria and I finally went back to our high school ways. He shed a tackle to make this a 28-yard gain, and then I ruined it almost immediately by trying to fit it into a window that just wasn't there. Obviously, that wasn't ideal, but head coach Craig Bull kept his faith in me, and I scrambled for my first rushing touchdown ever, which I followed up on the following drive with a beautiful pass over the middle to tight end Trayton Welch. Utah State would score right after it, but I was just happy that I had finally gotten into a rhythm with the rest of my offense until my day would end with me rolling out into the biggest pounding I'd ever taken. I didn't even see number three coming in my direction, but that was the last time we would have the ball, and my season would end with me only being QB1 for two games, but I'd earned the starting role at Wyoming, and I was ready to have a much better sophomore year. After working my entire freshman season to become the starter, I was ready to take my game to the next level, and I had bigger goals of making it to the NFL, so not only was I striving for success to help my team this season, but I was also hoping I would get attention from other schools. I don't necessarily want to transfer anywhere, but if I can perform well enough while also getting an NIL payday, this could be the last season I take the field in a Wyoming jersey. My first game of the season was against number 9 Oregon though, so to prepare for that, I needed to have a good practice right beforehand, and I felt like I was unstoppable. However, going against the Ducks defense will be much harder than the Wyoming backups, and I hated when my coach would call these terrible halfback tosses. On top of that, I was running for my life because my guys were too scared to block the Oregon defensive ends, and it really hurts to watch this back on the big screen. Again, my goal throughout the years darn transfer offers, but it won't be easy. And during my recruitment as a four-star, Missouri and Nebraska both wanted me, but I decided I'd rather play in college with my best friend Gio Saria at Wyoming, and earning offers back from them now would be very challenging to do. Luckily, I finished the first half finally getting us into a position to score, but after that moment, things just didn't go the way that they needed to. And even after I got the ball out, the Oregon defensive line was just torturing me. It was clear this group of guys would never get me any national attention, but I wasn't too deserving of it either as I lost the ball after getting railed on the sack, and Oregon took that back to the crib while I struggled to get up so I never saw the field again, and I actually made my head coach so mad that if I didn't have a good practice, I would lose my starting job at Wyoming. Let's just say that I took about every check down that I could, and I was very particular about the place where I'd try to throw for 15 yards, but it was going well until once again, 
again, left tackle Caden Barnett decided he didn't feel like blocking, and my new tight end John Gillenborg, who I thought I could trust, not only slipped on this route, but also dropped the pass, so before I knew it, I was back to being the backup, but against FAU, sophomore Evan Savora failed to get us the win, so I knew with a decent performance in practice, I'd have the starting spot back immediately, but Gio Saria dropped this ball, which turned into an interception, and I'm not gonna lie, the longer I played with this offense, the more I regretted my decision to attend college at Wyoming, but there was a chance that I was actually the problem, because Evan Savoba played very well against number 21 Michigan State and almost pulled off the unexpected upset, so I had a lot of work to do if I wanted to earn my starting job back, and I was ready to put it in. To get any transfer offers to escape Wyoming, though, I would need to be on the field in the first place, and let's just say that after watching the Spartans game from the sidelines, I was ready. With this pass to senior wide receiver a year Asante, I earned enough of Craig Bowles' trust back, and I got what I wanted. I had a chance to earn the starting spot again this week in practice, and if I had to run for every yard, I'd do whatever it took, because when I tried to stand in the pocket, my offensive line didn't give me any time, so I took matters into my own hands, and this elusiveness showed off the talent I secretly had. I was throwing a very hard ball today, but whenever I took my checkdowns, I limited the power that I put on the football for obvious reasons. It seemed like I was about to get on Craig Bowles' good side for the first time in weeks, and this pass over the middle of the field to senior Devin Bodie is what officially sealed the deal, making me number one on the depth chart, and that was just in time for conference play where I went in upgrading a lot. My throwing stats got way better, and all of a sudden, I was an 87 overall. This was my first game back as the starting quarterback, and it was on the road at Hawaii, but I prepared a lot beforehand, and it showed on our first drive. However, on our next one, I made a crucial mistake when I failed to leave the pocket, because I ended up getting hurt on that play, and I wasn't able to get back onto the field until a bit into the second quarter, but my confidence wasn't ruined from my failed rollout on the last drive. With how my offensive line played, I knew I had to do it, and it paid off tremendously, but by midway through the third quarter, it was a four-point game, and once again, I was leading us down the field as I finished it off with an easy dump off to the slant route, and all I was hoping was we could hang on to our lead, but with a few minutes remaining, I made the mistake of not throwing it away, and then on the next play, I might have had somebody open, but I sailed the pass out of bounds, and I couldn't believe I was able to pick up the third and 16 to a year Asante, which was massive, but that still wasn't enough to seal the deal. On our next third down, I tried my hardest to help us convert, but I failed, and then Craig Bull forced me to go for it on fourth and six, but I knew that I immediately lost all of his trust with this interception, and luckily my defense held on, so we would win. I thought I put up pretty solid stats, but once again, I got benched, and that backfired for us because we would lose to Colorado State by 17 points. At this point, I wanted to transfer out of Wyoming so badly, but if I was gonna do that, I'd need to get some other schools interested in me first, and I was gonna lose my mind if another practice was rainy with drop passes. It wasn't easy, but on the final rep of practice, I managed to escape the pocket before it collapsed, and this run would give me just enough coach trust to get where I had to be. I couldn't believe I was competing for the starting job again, but I needed to secure it, and I wish the other colleges I wanted to transfer to could see this practice tape, because it would show how much I could endure while still turning nothing into something. It still doesn't make any sense why I lost the starting spot after winning, but Craig Bull doesn't trust me, and everything I did in this quarterback battle was intended to get on his good side. Since my offensive line was rough, it took me a while to get it going, but I was performing well under immense pressure, and my tight end, John Glyenborg, who was the new starter, was my top target. With a few reps left, I needed one more big play, and this wasn't supposed to be my read, but since the running back got laid out, I had to take it, and I was QB1 for the third time, but to win the conference, I had some work to do. On my first drive, my coach didn't let me throw the ball once, but he did let me run it with the option, and you best believe that I took full advantage of that one opportunity. It wouldn't matter though, because just like every other week, free rushers would get in on me, and I was becoming so frustrated playing at Wyoming, but I made that decision to come here. We needed to beat San Jose State, and I wasn't able to do very much myself, but at least the run was working against the Spartans, and I wish our defense could get a stop because we fell back down three quickly. I wanted to play with Gio Saria so bad, but he kept dropping passes, so I had to spread the love to other guys on the team since he wasn't reliable anymore, and that made a big difference as we actually started flying down the field with big gain after big gain. I even finished off the first half in the perfect way, but of course, by the time I saw the field again, we were still trailing the Spartans, so I had to lead us once again, and surely my starting spot was secure at this point. I was 14 for 17 on the day, and then I put my life on the line for another score, so you know that something had to go wrong. Not only would I panic and lose this football, but it would also get picked up, and there was nobody near the defensive end to stop him from taking it to the house, so I thought I was starting to show out, but then I fell apart, and going into the fourth, we were still down by three, where I then went on to fumble for the second time, but in this situation, it also resulted in us taking a safety. I don't know how we were still in this game with four minutes remaining, but on third and three, my coach called a halfback draw, and let's just say that when we needed to pick it up on fourth down, I sold, but my D 
defense miraculously got a stop, so somehow this one was still not over for us, and with a minute and a half left, I decided to take things into my own hands. I was not a runner coming into college, but the more I did it, the faster and more confident I became, and San Jose State was unfortunately able to send it to overtime. But before we see how that unfolds, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks, where you just pick higher or lower on player projections. Recently, Omari and Hampton has been racking up the rushing yards, so I'm expecting him to go for more against Clemson, while Michael Penix scores at least three touchdowns. If you add more players, you can win up to 25 times the money, but I'm sticking with these two and putting in 25 to hopefully win 75. I can also get you a deposit match up to $100 on Prize Picks, so use promo code BOARD when you sign up and they'll match up to $100, assuming you reside in one of the 31 states they're available in. Now we'll see how overtime goes and I'm nervous, but I wasted no time slinging it 25 yards to the end zone to wide receiver Jalen Sargent, and then my defense returned to their first half form where they couldn't manage to get a single stop. All I could do was watch knowing that I wasn't getting thrown back out there, and for the second time in a row, I hooked up with Jalen Sargent for six on our first play, but the drive after that, I remembered why I couldn't trust Gio Saria, and it got bad as even when I tried to fit it into my tight end, he wasn't able to handle the heat, and that left me no choice but to try and force it on fourth and ten where I turned it over again. San Jose State would ruin any hopes we had of winning the conference, and my five turnovers canceled out the six touchdown game, so I was about to be the third stringer if practice didn't go well, and I had to increase my accuracy again. I managed to go from the starter to a potential third string quarterback in one week, but I wasn't willing to let my career end this way, and even though my guys up front clearly didn't want to see me succeed, I was going to become QB1 again, get some transfer offers, and get out of Wyoming. At this point, it might seem like that would take a miracle, but I have to make it work because I can't do another season of teammates that can't hold on to the football. By the end of the day, Craig Bull let me stay as just the backup, but following our bye week, my next practice in the rain had to be special, and I opened it up by letting the ball slip out of my hands. All I wanted to do was have some transfer offers out of here, but I had to become a starter consistently for that, and I don't know how I kept my head on straight for this entire season, but it showed how mentally tough I was. I was finding ways to make my lack of help work, and I just needed some other college coaches to somehow notice it. Due to how well I was playing, I was very close to earning another position battle, but with a few refs remaining, I needed one more catch, and I swear this downpour was going to drive me insane. In the end, I clutched up by finding all reliable John Glyenborg, and I was ready to compete again because I was just sick of holding the kicker's balls. It was clear that Evan Savoba wasn't the answer, so I don't know why I kept getting benched, but I had to beat him out for the starting job for like the fifth time in a position battle, and it was frustrating because stuff like this always manages to happen. I was not willing to sit on the bench for another week though, and on one of the final reps, I took matters into my own hands, running for just enough to win the battle, and I never want to go through that again. We had no chance of winning the Mountain West, so in these last five games, my only goal was to see how many colleges would let me transfer into play for them, and I was willing to put my body on the line to get out of Wyoming. I was actually enjoying that Craig Bull was letting me run the option every so often, and on 3rd and 21, instead of forcing a deep throw down the field, I stayed true to pounding the rock, and I was fighting hard. Apparently, I should have continued to do that, because when I tried to thread the needle, I failed, and then when I tried to send it on a deep ball, I just couldn't get enough under it, and thankfully, it was dropped, but I wasn't moving after the play, and by the time that I finally got back onto the field, we were down by 10 until I threw for this touchdown. We needed an onside kick to bail us out, but that didn't happen, and shockingly, with 32 seconds remaining, the defense got us the ball back, so I went out there with a chance of helping us force overtime, and after I completed this 38-yard pass that got us inside the red zone, we could score six, but I limped off the field again, and it was so hard to watch, but the final play of the game wasn't able to reach the end zone, so we lost again, and I still had zero other schools interested in me because my season stats were pretty atrocious. I had to have a massive game against Troy, so of course it started like this, and I swear I'll never get to leave this team because nobody knows knows how to catch. Approaching halftime, we still didn't have a single point on the board, but I knew that I needed to do something, and thank goodness I was able to thread the needle with this ball to my tight end to finish the half. I said I needed to prove myself to get out of Wyoming, and if plays like this weren't enough to do that, I don't know what would, because I gave it my all, and whenever I took sacks, there really wasn't much I could do. Head coach Craig Bull surprisingly let me attempt a long 4th and 20, so I knew I couldn't disappoint, and I sure didn't, but I knew that I needed to throw for more touchdowns to garner any attention, and all of my receivers were making it so much harder for me to do so. At this point, I felt like I had no other option here but to immediately try and pick it up myself with my legs, and it's hard to believe I could do all this with 74 speed, but my team still lost the game, and I couldn't believe it, but I did have some interest. It came from Northern Colorado and FCS school, and I'd never transfer there because they're even worse, but it gave me motivation to keep working hard, and I was becoming an even better quarterback. I had three games left to earn a good transfer offer from other colleges, and I had a great opportunity today. If we could upset seven and two Boise State,
State, that could shake a lot of things up, and we were already up by seven, so it was crucial that we finish this drive off, and that's when I completely sold. Since our kicker missed the field goal, we still only had seven approaching halftime, but then I sent up a prayer to Gio Saria, and of course, he couldn't hold on. I don't know what happened to him since high school, because his hands used to be like glue, but he would make up for it, and to end the first half, the game finally slowed down in my head, and I was picking apart Boise State's defense, but by the third quarter, my accuracy was off again, and this could have potentially gone for an extremely long touchdown. We found ourselves down by one, and this had to be one of the worst third and 11 play calls from Craig Bull himself, but my defense held it down though, so we got it back, and if you ever wanted to see how determined I was, I think the effort on this play really shows it. We needed a drive to go our way again, and it seemed like everything was going smoothly on this one, but we all know that's a recipe for disaster. I didn't even have a chance to get this ball out before getting pounded and fumbling it away, which Boise State recovered, but fortunately, when we needed a stop, the defense actually clutched up, so with a minute and 23 seconds left, I was out there with an opportunity, but let's just say that my team didn't seem to be ready for the moment as I had to deal with back-to-back -back drops. Here on third down, I should have taken the drag, but I went for the first down instead, and this was just another heartbreaker, but I had a couple of touchdowns, and the following week, this game would change the entire trajectory of my college career. I was facing off against 2-8 and Air Force, so this was a perfect chance to finally do well, and Jalen Sargent continued to be one of the guys I could rely on. I needed to throw for a lot more touchdowns to garner any attention, though, and if they continue to leave the seam open, I'd take it every time. Up to this point, I was already 11 for 16 for 168 yards, but then I saw a streaking a year Asante for a 52-yard touchdown, and the day just kept getting better. This was the first time this season things seemed to go perfectly, and Gio Saria ended the first half finally scoring again, so since I was dominating after I threw for my fifth touchdown, I got pulled, but this stat line definitely put the nation on notice, and I had one remaining game to earn transfer offers if I wanted to leave Wyoming. I was so proud of my offensive line on this play because they gave me enough time to find Gio Saria for a 31-yard touchdown, and it felt great to finally play the weaker opponents on our schedule. I was able to do so much more, and highlights like this would be big for me. It was never going to be another perfect performance as this fourth and six went atrociously, but because I finally had the time to let the routes develop, I was doing way better, and the only thing still driving me crazy is I don't think anybody taught these guys how to catch. Eventually, Devin Bodie would figure it out as he helped us get down the field here, and I finished the drive off by finding him in the back of the end zone for six. With a couple minutes remaining, it seemed like we were going to win our second straight as long as we held on to our three-point lead. And trust me, I still had a lot of frustrating moments during that process, but at least I eventually got another passing touchdown, and this knee would end the game where I threw for 250 yards and three touchdowns. It might have been a pretty rough sophomore year, but I had around 27 total touchdowns, and since I didn't even play the entire season, I was only able to get some interest from these four football programs. I felt like I had no choice but to transfer, and I'll let you all know what I'm doing next Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm transferring to a new school to play the final two seasons of my collegiate career, and I have four better options than my current situation, but I'm gonna have to leave my best friend behind at Wyoming. We dominated high school football together, winning a Nebraska State Championship, but he's one of the reasons I'm transferring as he hasn't been the same player in college, and all of my teammates here seem to struggle to catch the football. On top of that, I have an offensive line that looks lost, and head coach Craig Bull doesn't trust me, so if I ever want a chance of making the NFL, I have no choice but to escape Wyoming, and Boise State would be a cool landing spot as I could play on a blue field alongside destroying my former team, but they don't offer me the attention that these other schools would. As for Nebraska, they just aren't very good, which doesn't help me, and Kansas can't guarantee me the starting spot until I'm a senior, so it seems like Missouri is a no-brainer decision, especially since they play in the SEC and Brady Cook just graduated from there. In this video, I'll be playing my final two seasons, and my goal is to get drafted into the NFL while also making the 12-team playoffs at least once. At my first practice, I was already enjoying the fact that my receivers could hold onto the ball consistently, and I showed that I was ready for our first game against Memphis. After transferring to Missouri, I wasted no time throwing for a touchdown, and I was loving it here so far. My best receiver was Luther Burden III, who stayed for his senior year instead of declaring for the NFL draft early, and he was going to make my life 10 times easier this season. From what I've been able to see so far, my offensive line gives me plenty of time, and if needed, I can still escape the pocket and run. I don't know how this defensive tackle was able to keep up with me, but so far, I was doing a great job versus Memphis, which gave me some hope for this year, and before halftime, I had already thrown for my third touchdown of the game. Once we got to SEC play, it would definitely be harder, but this was nice, and I got pulled at the end of the third quarter, but I finished with four touchdowns to win player of the game, and the next week, on the road against the Red Wolves, I was hoping we got the same type of result. However, I attempted to run the flea flicker, and my running back didn't pitch it well, so we gave up a stupid touchdown early, and by the end of the first quarter, we had the ball, but we were still tied with Arkansas State. The longer the game went on, the worse it seemed to get for us as we fell behind by 
seven. And the main issue was I hadn't earned enough of head coach Eli Drinkwitz trust yet, so I had to run exactly what he called. And sometimes I had to be very patient for it to work, but at least he called a pretty fun offense to run as I got to be a part of multiple option plays throughout each game this year. Once we got inside the red zone, I was hoping Luther Bird in the third would create separation, but he didn't. And that was the first pick I'd ever thrown at Missouri, but I was unfazed. Last year, I started with eight touchdowns to seven interceptions, and I finished with 27 touchdowns to nine interceptions, so I can always improve a lot. By the start of the fourth quarter, it took a while, but I helped us take the lead back, and watching our defense perform in the second half from the sidelines was highly satisfying. I put Joshua Manning in a terrible position here, but he still managed to hang on, and from that point, we were able to run down most of the remaining time, with this field goal putting us up by two possessions and sealing our win. I was 2-0 as a starter so far, but I needed to earn more coach trust to call plays, and that made practice very important for me this season. With the Gators next up on the schedule, I needed to be prepared, and I earned a lot of trust from head coach Eli Drinkwitz with this laser up the middle. Beating Florida would be the toughest task I've had since transferring to Missouri, but after taking a terrible sack on first down, I bounced back by finding tight end Brett Norfleet. I wouldn't see the ball again until there were two minutes left in the half though, and with the rain coming down this hard, I was pleasantly surprised when my receivers caught it, but I'm not at Wyoming anymore, so I guess that's just a new luxury that I'll need to adjust to. Now that I had a solid supporting cast around me, I was having a blast squeezing it into tight holes, and to end the second quarter, I sensed that the blitz was coming, so I immediately rolled out to the right and did my best to outrun every single defender on the field. We had a lead, but we needed to hold on to it, and it took us a bit, but after handing it off to Tavoris Jones three times, he fell in. Then our defense forced a huge interception, so we went up by even more, and since things were going really well for me, I don't want to talk about this interception. The important thing was we were still up by two possessions, and Luther Bird in the third was fighting for extra yards, so after Jamarian Wayne's wet body slipped right by the Gators' corner, we were able to officially seal the game, and the following week, we were playing winless Hawaii, so it should be cake. I was taking some pretty rough hits early on while running the option, so I was glad I was able to stay in the game, but on this play, I got reminded of what it was like at Wyoming, and right after this, we faced SEC opponents again taking on Vanderbilt, so I needed to get in a groove to be ready for that game. This was the biggest run of my collegiate career, and I wish I was faster, but at least I still got credit for a touchdown. I'd rather act like I didn't get railed on the following possession, which resulted in a fumble, and obviously, I did struggle for portions of this game, but I also continued to score touchdowns, so I felt like I was ready for Vandy, and we were also still undefeated this season, so transferring had to be the best decision I've ever made. I didn't have enough of my coach's trust, though, so in order to be able to flip the plays and eventually call my own, I had to keep showing out in practice, which I did, and I also got us into the end zone on our first drive against Vanderbilt with this throw, but unfortunately, we'd only score another seven in the first half due to some struggles, and the worst part was on the final Hail Mary of the second quarter, we could have had a chance to tie it, but instead, I added an interception to my stat sheet. It wasn't the end of the world because I persevered and eventually got us the lead, but the main reason for our success was our defense figured out how to stop AJ Swan in the second half, and then they punted instead of going for it, so that meant that all we had to do was get one more first down to seal it, and we barely got it here, but that's all that matters as we got the win, and that actually got us ranked for the first time, but now we were going to be challenged for the top spot in the SEC. I had to play at Georgia, which was the toughest defense I've ever faced, and I was struggling immensely for the first time since I transferred from Wyoming. Sanford Stadium was so loud, I thought my running back called for it here, which resulted in a turnover, and after a holding call, we were stuck on a long third and 20, which we were never going to convert. It was a rough first quarter, and even though we finally scored, approaching halftime, it was 20-7, to so we needed more, and with about 30 seconds left in the half, Georgia ran cover two, leaving the middle of the field wide open, but for whatever reason, my coach forced me to run a halfback toss as time ticked down, and after taking a sack, all I could do at the end of the half was throw up a Hail Mary, which just resulted in my first pick of the game. I wish I had earned enough of my coach's trust to call my own plays because I think it could have been much closer, but instead, I was forced to hand it off on third downs where we didn't do anything, and at the very end of the game, I sensed the pressure, so I ran for a touchdown, but it was too late, and this was the worst stat line I had put up all year, but I don't think this loss will ruin our season. We still have a shot at making the 12-team playoff, but we have to take down 5-1 and Mississippi State on the road, and I was ready to help us bounce back. Due to my patience, I was able to find senior receiver Jamari and Wayne streaking wide open down the field for six, and from there, I just continued to dominate. However, Mississippi State's offense was able to keep up with us, so it was far from over, and with about four minutes remaining, it was crucial that we scored, so Tavorius Jones taking it in was big. After that, all I could do was watch from the sidelines as my defense got a critical stop, and we had secured another road win in the SEC where I was able to throw for 264 yards. I had to face number 13 Houston next, which was going to be extremely tough, and if we were going to beat the number 13 team in the country, we couldn't have drops like this, and we also couldn't afford to 
continue to fall just short of the first down marker. To be honest, we shouldn't have been in this game, but our defense forced a big interception, and that's what led to me throwing the game-tying touchdown. However, Houston went down to score again, and then this safety made an incredible play on the ball, so we went into the half trailing by 10, and it seemed like ever since we started facing real competition, I was struggling a bit, which was not good because I only had a season and a half left of college eligibility. I still wanted to make the NFL, even if I was a late-round draft pick, and with about 30 seconds left, I'd throw for my third touchdown of the day, but we were still behind by two possessions, and I watched as we didn't get the onside kick, so we fell to 6-2 and two this season, and we couldn't lose any of our last four, so I upgraded my speed in Excel, and it was time to finish the year strong. I still believe we can make the playoffs, even if we aren't ranked right now, because we could finish as a 10-2 SEC team, but that would entail beating the last four opponents on our schedule, and I would have had the first down here, but the South Carolina defender almost tipped the ball into an interception. I figured we would have just taken the field goal from there, but Eli Drinkwitz was calling the game aggressively, and it paid off as we increased our lead to 14 points. By the end of the first half, it seemed like this one was already over after I threw for a touchdown to tight end Brett Norfleet, and I was starting to feel myself a bit. Under pressure, I put this ball perfectly on the money to Luther Burden III for 53 yards, so we were cruising to our seventh win of the year, and I just continued to add on touchdowns to my stat line. After how I played against Houston, this was much needed, and I was hoping some NFL scouts were starting to take notice because we were back in the top 25, and there was no way we could lose to Tennessee now. Our season needed to end strong, and to start the second quarter, I thread the needle up the middle for my second touchdown, and from there, it just continued to get better. It wasn't even halftime yet, and I had already run in for my fourth score of the day, so after what I did to South Carolina and then this, I knew I would start getting a little NFL interest. What would really make or break my career, though, was how I finished the year, so this couldn't be my last amazing performance, and we were actually leading our division in the SEC. This was the best possible way to start the game against my favorite team, Kentucky, as I hooked up with junior tight end Brett Norfleet for a 60-yard gain, and for the opening drive, he was my go-to guy catching this touchdown. It wasn't snowing too hard, but it got Joshua Manning just wet enough to slip away from the Kentucky defender, and from there, he'd take it to the house. So without a shadow of a doubt, we were playing the best football we had played all year, and I threw for my fourth touchdown before halftime for the second week in a row. It felt like it was already over, and in the end, we would beat Kentucky at Kroger Field by 18 points. I had really elevated my level of play, and throughout the year, I had upgraded so much, so I was confident going into our game against Texas A&M, but I shouldn't have been. All we had to do was win to make the SEC championship, but the Aggies were extremely prepared for us because they were also playing for a playoff spot, so with a minute left in the first half, we were trailing 27-7, and we had to score. The best option I had was to chuck up a 50-50 ball to Luther Burden III, who was able to come down with it, and to finish the second quarter, we were within 13 points, so we were back in it, and the comeback continued to open up the second half. Our punt returner even took one for a touchdown, so Texas A&M had collapsed, but they took their lead back with this score, and I had to respond, so I made sure we were able to. The issue was, they had enough time to get into field goal range, but our defense forced a massive interception, so we were able to take the Aggies into overtime, but my coach called three straight running plays, and then pulled me off the field on fourth down, so Texas A&M could win with a touchdown, and this hurt to watch because this would knock us out of the playoffs and the SEC championship as well. Even though I played almost perfectly, my junior year didn't end the way I wanted, and I was ready to start my senior season already, but I had to play the Outback Bowl first against 8-4 and four Michigan State. We were the better team, so we basically doubled their score, and it was a good ending to the year, but if I was going to have the best senior season possible, I needed to put the work in this offseason, and since that's all I did, I had big goals for this year. Surprisingly, I was projected to be in the Heisman race, and we were actually ranked 12th in the first AP poll. My first game of my senior season was against number 8 Georgia, and their defense was insane, but that wasn't going to stop me from performing at the highest level. I had a lot of eyes watching me since I was in the Heisman race, so I knew I had to show out, and I was never known for being a runner, but after being in this system for a year already, I was getting better and becoming more evasive, so I was starting to get on a bit of a roll, and I would follow it up with one of my best plays yet, as I made an amazing throw under pressure to Joshua Manning. Since Luther Burton III graduated and went on to the NFL, I had to find a new top target, and I was spreading it around to about everybody on the team, but I also spread it around to players on Georgia as well in the process. I don't know what I was thinking here, but I didn't place the ball the way I wanted to, and I had to track down this corner to bring him down. That allowed the Bulldogs to get it back within a possession, but I had to make up for my mistake, and I did just that. Thankfully, Georgia's defense wasn't able to stop the run at the end, so we would win, and besides that pick, I thought I did really well. My next matchup was against the Citadel, an FCS school, so it was easy, and it was a great opportunity for me to pad my stats. Approaching halftime, I had already thrown for three touchdowns, and then I was able to rush for one as well, going 18 yards on the ground, so it was clear that I would be pulled from the game sooner rather than 
later, but I made sure to continue to run it up before my coach decided enough was enough. I didn't finish with many yards, but I had six touchdowns and we were up to number seven in the polls. My first road game of the season was at Wisconsin, but I was thankful to be playing a Big Ten West team instead of somebody like Ohio State or Michigan because no matter how well they played us, it wouldn't be as tough, but I should probably show them a little bit of respect considering they picked me off in the red zone. It was actually a close game approaching halftime until I slung it 30 yards to Jamarian Wayne, and after my defense forced an interception, I followed it up with another touchdown to my tight end. If anybody was standing out as my number one target so far, it was probably him, and things were going so well until I took this rough sack in the fourth quarter which would put me out for the rest of the game, but at that point it was pretty much over already and we were still undefeated, but this year we had to play South Carolina on the road and they had gotten much better, so with a couple minutes left in the half, we were only able to score once, and part of that also had to do with this rough play calling. We ended up falling behind by three, and even though I hadn't made any mistakes, we were not doing well, so something had to change, and the second I saw cover two, I went straight to Makai Miller, who would take it to the crib for six. I thought I was going to find him over the top for another touchdown, but I underthrew this ball into an interception, so unfortunately, by the time I got us into the end zone again, there were only two minutes left, and the onside kick recovery did not go our way, so even though we'd force a stop, there would be almost no time, and I was hoping we could get to at least midfield to try a Hail Mary, but South Carolina was ready, which meant I finished the game with two interceptions, and that dropped me down to fifth in the Heisman race, so I worked even harder during practice to get back in a groove. I can't believe Vanderbilt is ranked 12th, but since they are, this matchup could decide whether we make the playoffs or not, and with implications that high as a senior, I knew I needed to step up to help us win. On fourth and goal, the Commodores thought they had a stop, but I got the pitch off just in time, and to end the first half, I worked so hard to get us into a position where we could put up even more points on Vanderbilt, but their safety anticipated my read correctly to prevent that from happening, and the rest of the game, I just let my teammates do all of the work. Jamal Roberts was by far our best player today, and we improved to 4-1 and one this season, so things seemed to be trending back upward, and with Appalachian State up next, we should get another win, but this game did not go the way that anybody thought it would. We went up 14-3 with a minute left in the half, but then we were held scoreless throughout the entire third quarter, and after finally getting us inside the red zone again, I floated the ball straight to the Mountaineers defender, so it's a good thing that my defense was clutch, but we should have never been in such a close one with Appalachian State, and I didn't deserve player of the game, but somehow I was still in the Heisman race, and as of right now, we were projected to be a playoff team. I had to face an HBCU next, and I never enjoy playing when it's dumping rain, but since we were taking on Grambling State, that shouldn't be a problem, and this might be the most impressive running play of my career. I made three guys look silly, and after I broke free, there wasn't anybody close enough to stop me from scoring six, so after struggling in two of my last three games, it was nice to be dominating again, and with a minute left in the first half, I was 12 for 13 with three touchdowns on the day. This is what I needed to win the Heisman Trophy, and I got pulled after that, but I still did very well, so we thank Grambling State for coming out here, and we were ready to return to SEC play, where we could still take our division, but we had to win out. I was playing at the swamp in the rain, so the conditions and atmosphere were far from ideal, and by the end of the first quarter, even though we put together a couple of decent drives, we had no points, so that was frustrating, but what was worse was getting blown up hard by the Florida cornerback, and I don't know how I was still out there after that play, but I made something out of this, so going into the second half, I thought we'd have a lead, but that just wasn't the case. In fact, with a couple minutes left in the third quarter, we were trailing by seven until I threw this touchdown, and I'm not sure how my tight end was able to hold onto this ball, but I'm very thankful that he did. It led to us marching down the field, and I tried to finish it off by taking it in myself, but since I got stopped short, I had to make sure it didn't happen again, and unfortunately, the Gators responded back, so we were all tied up at 21, and I wanted to make sure that this was the final drive of the game. With about 30 seconds remaining, though, I got baited by a safety for an interception, and Florida would go down to win on a field goal, so it felt like the season was over, but remember, 12 teams make the playoffs, and I'm also third in the Heisman race, so there was still a lot to play for, and I was going to make sure I got into the NFL. If we win these final four games, I think we will still make the college football playoffs, but we have to take on LSU, and my first touchdown of the game came super early on with this laser straight to Brett Norfleet. The Tigers were 3-4, and four, so they weren't as good as they've been in prior seasons, and I threw for three touchdowns in the first half alone. I needed to prove that I was a real contender for the Heisman, and I felt like plays like this did that, but then I'd make a stupid decision like turning the ball over on 4th and 8 for no reason, and even though we'd still get the win, each interception hurts my Heisman odds. Versus Tennessee, I also had a good start in this one, finding Joshua Manning for a touchdown, and I was starting to use my legs a bit more, making myself a dual threat, which would separate me from a lot of quarterbacks in this class. The ultimate goal was still making the NFL, and I felt like I should have been on more teams' radars, but my lack of decision 
indecisiveness when nothing gets open is one of my biggest flaws, and that's the reason we failed to convert this fourth and goal to end the first half. It wasn't the end of the world since Joshua Manning was having himself a day, but if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have beaten Tennessee. In the end, we ended up winning by 14, and after destroying the volunteer defense, I had earned enough of my coach's trust. This was the wildest start I'd ever experienced in a game as I found Daniel Blood with this pass, and he was clearly out for blood today after seeing how hard he stiff-armed that dude to score a touchdown. Also, now that Eli Drinkwitz trusted me enough to call some of my own plays, I was so much better, because whenever he wanted to do something stupid like run the ball, I'd switch it up, and I was still trying to win the Heisman while getting us into the playoffs, so every play was so important, especially with only two games left, and I felt like I had been so lucky in this one. The Kentucky cornerbacks never seemed to be in the right position, which really benefited my stat line, and I honestly wish the Wildcats could have at least attempted to keep up with our offense, because I would have been able to stay in the game longer, but after I saw the terrible positioning of the safety, I knew I could throw for another one before getting pulled. Wide receiver Miki Miller was just faster than every DB on this field, and that's when my coach decided I'd done enough, or at least I thought. He knew I was gunning for the Heisman, so he let me stay in the game, and that was so nice of him because I was able to get another touchdown with this dot. After that, though, he decided to have some sportsmanship, but I wasn't complaining because I threw for eight touchdowns and my Heisman dreams were so close to being a reality. My final game of my college career, at least in the regular season, was on the road at Texas A&M, and recently, it seemed like I couldn't do anything wrong. Even when I stumbled due to running into my own guy, I turned it into a 35-yard completion down the field, and being able to call my own plays was a cheat code until I threw this interception. We were losing to the Aggies already, and on 4th and 3, we couldn't pick it up, so we fell behind by 14, and I was getting flashbacks to how last season ended. I realized I could no longer care about winning the Heisman for myself, but instead, just getting my team the win so we could make the playoffs, and this explosive 86-yard play to end the first half was insane. The problem was, by the time I'd get the ball back again, we were down by 14, and these cornerbacks were so much better than Kentucky's as they clamped our receivers up, and if we wanted to win this game, the comeback had to start now because time was not going to be on our side. I'd hand this one off so we could score a touchdown, and thankfully our defense held the Aggies, so we got the ball back again, but we still had a long way to go, and just like last week, Miki Miller ended up being the receiver that pulled off miracles. I watched from the sidelines as we just needed to get one more stop on Texas A&M, and on 3rd and 13, after we failed to hold them on their last 3rd down, we got a huge interception, so we had a chance, and you best believe that without any hesitation at all, I called 4 verticals. We had actually completed the comeback, but Texas A&M scored a touchdown in 2 plays, so we were down 7 again with a minute left, and the result flashed before my eyes as I got hit and the Aggie defensive end almost picked it off. This could be a career-defining moment as every scout in the country was tuned in, and with about 10 seconds left, I had an open receiver, but Daniel Blood dropped it. That was our chance to tie it back up because now the Texas A&M defense was prepared for that, and I would get one final heave attempt to the end zone, but none of my guys turned around to attempt to catch it, so all of the Missouri fans were devastated, and Texas A&M might have ruined our season again because going into conference championship week, we were ranked around 13. My season stats were better than last year, but it wasn't enough to win the Heisman Trophy, and thankfully, we did sneak in with the final spot. I made the college football playoffs, and this is my senior year, so even though we're a 12 seed, I hope we can pull off some upsets. As a junior, I remember losing to Houston, so I needed to redeem myself, and by the way I was playing so far, that seemed like a reality. They were a big 12 team now, but I didn't fear them like other programs, and maybe I should have because all of my success went out the window the second I turned it over. I tried to get over there to bring him down, but I just got embarrassed even more instead, and if you're wondering why I didn't win the Heisman, I feel like these past few passing attempts make it clear. We were fortunate to only be down 7 with a minute left in the half, and even though I'd been stinking it up, I had no fear of slinging it, especially the Miki Miller. Being the underdog was fun because there was no expectations or pressure on me, and that meant going for it on 4th and 3 when we should have just punted, which would have been a great decision if I didn't end this drive with another interception. It was so embarrassing how much I was crumbling under pressure, and that might cause me to not get drafted at all, so we had to escape with a win, and while trying to evade the pressure and throw it away, for some reason I pump faked instead, turning it over again. This was the worst performance of my career, so it's a good thing my defense forced a fumble, and honestly, at this point, I don't even want to talk about it or think about what's happening. I did not deserve to be a quarterback in the playoffs, and I was honestly expecting to get benched, but thankfully, after a while, my defense was somehow able to hold Houston again, and their kicker missed another field goal, so it was still 14-14, to and we could actually win. Since I was so atrocious at throwing the ball today, having my worst career game ever, I decided it was best if I tried running instead, and this spin move caught the entire stadium completely off guard. Obviously, I didn't deserve to be in this game, but 
but since we still had a chance, I was trying my best and I only used my legs for this entire drive. I figured we'd settle for three, but Tavoris Jones took it in, and we were moving on to the next round where we would be facing off against the four-seeded Seminoles. I had somehow made it into the quarterfinals of the college football playoffs, and I don't know how, but all that mattered was we were here, and I continued where I left off by having success on the ground, going for 46 yards, and then I rolled out to throw a touchdown pass to Brett Norfleet. However, I couldn't just run around forever without screwing that up as well, and I gifted Florida State great field positioning, so they'd go on to score a touchdown from that, and I turned it over the next time we got into the red zone. This one was starting to feel just like the Houston game, and the problem with that is Florida State's defense is even better than the Cougars with crushing hits like this. It was very difficult to move the ball when nobody was on the same page, but on 4th and 7, I wanted to run that play back, and every Missouri fan was very thankful that we did, because that would lead to the touchdown that gave us a one-point lead, and I also broke Drew Locke's school record in the process. Just like our last one, this game was a defensive battle, and I thought I was going to pick up the first on fourth down here, but I was stopped short. If our defense wasn't playing so well, we would not be in this position, but I couldn't screw it up now. And on this jet sweep, Miki Miller, the hero of our season, took it almost 20 yards himself to the house, but Florida State wouldn't go away as they scored a touchdown, and A.J. Duffy would take in the two-point conversion. That meant I would need to clutch up and make this the final drive of the game, and I was not going out after making it this far. I had struggled for a while, but now it was time for me to show off to the NFL scouts, and with Jordan Harris holding onto this ball up the middle, we were in the exact position we needed. I watched as we kicked the go-ahead field goal, but on the final play when we should have just dropped everybody back, I witnessed the most heartbreaking moment of my life with the Seminole scoring. My college career was completely over, and Florida State actually went on to win it all. Despite the rough ending to my senior season, I got drafted, and I actually went in the second round with the 35th pick. The Denver Broncos were taking a shot on me, and for a four-star out of Nebraska, I think I had a pretty neat collegiate story and journey.